Some say that alongside this see-it-to-believe-it world is the shadowy realm of the supernatural. Sometimes the residents of that dimension touch us, and in one moment, our lives are changed forever. America's Lady of Supernatural Thrillers, Mary Ann Pohl, is your real ghost chatter host. On this podcast, you'll hear stories by real people who have seen real ghosts. Once in a while, Mary Ann will podcast a tale taken from the genre she loves best, the supernatural. Welcome to today's Real Ghost Chatter episode. Have you heard about Anchor? If you haven't, I'm here to tell you it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free, and I mean free. I haven't paid a dime to produce or distribute my podcasts. There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. How easy is that? Podcast distribution can be a headache, but not with Anchor. Anchor distributes your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. As a bonus and not an obligation, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to Real Ghost Chatter. I'm Marianne Paul, America's Lady of Supernatural Thrillers, a charter member of a wonderful group of authors called Author Masterminds, and your host on Real Ghost Chatter. Rosella C. Rowe is back to share more of her paranormal adventures. She is a ghost hunter and paranormal thriller author of the novel 2095, based off a true story, and is currently writing 911 Emergency. Rosella lives in Ohio and is the writer of the well-known blog, My Haunted Travel Blog. Rosella has years of ghost hunting and investigation experience in the paranormal field, traveling around the U.S. to the most haunted historic locations and writing about them in her blog. She prides herself on telling the real story and truth regarding her experiences with spirits encountered at at historic locations, as well as the legends that surround the entities. Welcome back, Rosella. Hi, thank you. Oh, it's good to have you here. First of all, I'm going to ask you to give us your blog URL address so people can find it. It's myhauntedtravelblog.blogspot.com. And then also you can find more information about me. Everything I post is on my Rosella Facebook page. I also have one. It's like under Rosella C. Rao. R-O-W-E, and then I have, yeah, a Haunting Good Time radio show is also on Anchor as well, and under a Haunting Good Time radio show, and then Facebook and Twitter. So it's really easy to find me on Facebook and Twitter. Everything I have kind of, I post there. Great. Fun, fun, fun. And I've had you on my podcast. Yes, you have. I've been on twice. I loved loved both of those times I was on. It was wonderful. It's so fun. Yeah. It it is. And you've had some other great people on, too. Yeah. I mean, I've had actually all the ghost guilds from the Victorian house on. Still one more person to go that I have to schedule it with. Most of my, my close friends have been on there. Also, Brent, also another ghost hunter that I go investigate with, Mm -hmm. and some others. So yeah, it's been really fun. Oh, that is so good. Well, today you're back because you've had even more crazy adventures. (laughs) So, Oh, girl, (laughs) hold on to your seat with this. (laughs) I can hardly wait. I don't know. Where do you want to start? You want to start with the farmhouse one or the one that I don't even know have a title for at this point? (laughs) I think we should start with the the other one first and then kind of move to the experiences that I had at the farmhouse. Great. Because that experience is shorter. Going back to the beginning, so... Rewind three years ago, I was finishing up 2095. So my book's called A Haunting at 2095. And that is my address that I used to live at in Troy, Ohio, basically. So I'm finishing this true story and I'm a medium. So this woman had come to me basically all my life and had tried to get me to write her story because she had committed suicide. She had regretted it. And then she wanted the world basically to understand her story because I was telling my story at the same time, change people's minds who are basically people who are contemplating suicide and how she regretted it. So that was what was going on 
was me three years ago. And it took me four and a half years to write the book. I was wrapping it up. And then I heard about this psychic convention and that a publisher was going to be at it in Cincinnati in April. So this is three years ago in February, actually, 2018 in February. And this was probably about February, I think that it was like two weeks after February 18th for sure. I remember it just because I was like researching this publisher, really cleaning up the my script 2095 to go show it to her. Because she was a paranormal publisher, which was crazy rare. And I'm like, this is a sign that I'm supposed to go and go to this convention. Not it was, however, for different reasons. Basically, I'm writing this story and I'm wrapping it up and editing it, polishing it kind of up for this publisher. And then all of a sudden, this story hits me. I mean, start to finish. You know, you're a writer, Marianne. It's kind of like a story plot will like maybe hit you, but maybe not all at once. Mine also have children's books that I write under a different name. Those books would always hit me from start to finish, like the entire thing. But they were smaller. You know, right. children's books are, you know, dinky. <laughs> this was the entire book from start to finish. And it was like, boom. I could not write it fast enough, that kind of thing. And I started, I started writing it for, because publishers want to see three chapters. And then after that, they'll want to see more if they're interested. And then that usually means that they'll publish it. So I'm like, okay, this is fine. So I'm going to write the three. And then I'll concentrate on the rest later because I have to finish my first novel I, my husband was like no you've got to stop doing this I can't believe you're writing another script you haven't even finished the other one yet you have to finish this it was it was like a hard thing for me because I just had two pullings at one time but to me this story wasn't real the second story the second book which is 911 emergency that you were talking about earlier when you're introducing me this book was a thriller to me like kind of like a paranormal romance I was constantly creating more on calling it a thriller because it was terrifyingly scary. The Exorcist has nothing on this book. <laughs> so I was like thinking this, right? And I'm like, okay, well, 2095 is so different. So if she doesn't like this, she'll like this one for sure. And you know, 2095 to me, this is a true story. And then the other story was not a true story. So um, maybe if she doesn't want a true story, she, I can throw this other story at her for sure. Mm -hmm. That was my mentality. So I go to the convention and the woman who I'm supposed to meet is not there. I mean, I'm looking everywhere. Her booth is empty, like someone else is in her area and stuff like that. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I go talk to the person who's in charge. And he's like, no, she's not here. She's in the hospital. She had abdomen surgery. Trying to really blow it off. You know, I'm a medium. So I'm like, this woman's dying. And no one's saying. Mm. So sure enough, three weeks later, she was dead. Yeah. So that was really interesting in itself. And she was really well known. I got a lot out of meeting her. I met her finally through the internet, just like the beauty of email. And a friend of a friend of a friend knew her. And I sent her my script. But because she was dying, she would not publish it was really the end result. And she wouldn't say straight out or anything like that. When she did die, people were shocked. No one really knew. I just knew. But you know, I always say to Harry, you can't pull the wool over a medium's eyes. It doesn't work. <laughs> So I'm just like, okay, well, you know, things are meant to be, whatever, right? I go home, I finish 2095, all this stuff happens basically with COVID and stuff, but I still managed to get it published. Like now it's been published since October of this year, this last year, 2020. Now I started working on the other one though, throughout the that rest of the summer and stuff. And, and then COVID and all these things happen with the kids, just things, life. And I'm also working as a substitute teacher. I have seven chapters that are written and the rest is in my head. And little things will kind of come to me now and then. And I'll be like, oh, well, that would be really great to put in the book. So things started happening recently that were signs that the book was true. So this is very interesting because i am really always been a person who's been denying the fact that this could be something that is a real person because this person that I'm writing about, this male figure, he's first of all like killed in a car accident very suddenly. And then he follows a police officer who's a female police officer home who finds his body and then he falls in love with her and he tries to kill her boyfriend. Oh my, nice guy. So he's not a nice person and he hurts her uh, various think. times. Oh my. Yes, I was being sarcastic when I said that. Go ahead. Oh yes, I know, no, no, yeah. 
No, gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, so he hurts her several times, and he has no remorse for it because he's just showing he's angry. Things like that. What I can kind of compare it to is Paranormal meets Dracula a lot. It's very interesting, but it's just like that psychological thriller and add all the paranormal effects like of seeing physical things and not a person you know around to do it and things are flying off the walls and stuff like that he also stacks all of her every single dish and cup she owns in a pyramid like style that's like beyond science basically so it would never really you know stay that way it would fall Mm-hmm. But very interesting kind of things. Anyway, so I have a bunch of these things in the book. My car actually recently, like, died. So I knew that my car was going to die, and I'm very attached to my car, <laughs> as some people have made fun of. But I just really was very emotional about this because I've had this car for over 10 years. And I knew it was going to happen. And the same morning that I knew this was going to happen and was trying to convince my husband not to take this car very far because I knew it was going to die and losing that battle, Harry called me, my friend from Victorian House. Mm -hmm. And he called me and he was very concerned and emotional, which was not very, I don't know, it just wasn't normal because he isn't very um, emotional, but he'll be, he's more like my dad figure kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, here's your advice. This is what I would do. Very fatherly. And this was not a call like that. This was, I had this dream about you writing a book all night long. I woke up four times trying to make the dream stop. And every time I woke up and would wait like 15, 20 minutes to go back to sleep so it would stop, I would go back to sleep and the dream would continue on. And I saw this guy who I believe was a character in your book and he was really dark and shadow-like with no face. I could never make out his face, but his mission was, you have to write my story. And I'm like, oh no. But I was having such a bad <laughs> Another <day>. one. <laughs> yeah, right. And I love to live in denial about this being real that I was like, push this aside, right? Mm-hmm. And carried on because I knew too this was going to be like the worst day of my life so I just didn't think about it four days later and I had told you about how Ashley had come to me and lifted the pretzel bag off my floor right um, that was that that was that day so the car came home and this is four days later and got signs from Ashley that she's like buck up everything's going to be okay and everything and I started feeling normal again the car came home it was on the driveway and I still need to get it fixed but it's still there and all that kind of stuff and I'm like oh I feel like I can breathe again like things are normal a little bit and moved on two days after that so that was a Friday now this is Sunday night I'm lying in bed and my husband he's an illustrator so he comes to bed really late at night because he does a day job thing and then he illustrates till like two in the morning Mm -hmm. so I go to sleep (laughs) girl way before that so I was I was lying in bed and you know, it's like you start to fall asleep and you're drifting to sleep and then all of a sudden something tells you, open your eyes and you don't really know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I had that moment and I'm like, as I was thinking, why do I have to open my eyes? I saw this streak. It looked kind of like a mini bolt of lightning that was probably about two feet thick and probably four feet long across mm-hmm. my wall on the right side of my room, where if a car drove by, it would not even project all, all the way over there. It would not be possible for that to reflect in a lights from a car to go over there. Plus I have major darkening curtains. And all my husband, I'm sorry, my son had been playing with this big train tent thing that day and I had taken it down and leaned it against the, the curtain. So the curtain was flat, like kind of against the wall. So if a car even did pass and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have hit that side of the wall, but say it did pass and you saw a light reflection, it would not have been able to really get through, right? Because mm-hmm. of those curtains. I sit up and I look, my dog is right next to me. I have a Yorkie poo and she's totally sound asleep. She didn't hear or sense anything. It was really strange. I'm looking around thinking, what the hell did I just see? Because I wrote that three years ago in my, in my book. Oh, so, wow. I had experienced something I wrote about, but had never experienced before right now in the moment. So in my book, Allie, my main character, is driving her car down a dark road in Troy, Ohio. It's on Leeway Road. 
So that's also another important factor. A word I thought a name that I had made up. There is no Leeway Road in Troy, Ohio. And I just made this up to be kind of different. And mm-hmm. she was in the dark in the woods by herself. And this bolt of lightning, white streak of light, comes across her windshield from the right and zigzags across her windshield, a bolt of lightning mm-hmm. really quickly. Mm-hmm. And this almost makes her ca- crash into a tree. Later on, this happens to her boyfriend. And this is how the spirit, the man who is not nice, tries to kill her boyfriend because he's going to ask her to marry him Mm -hmm. and he does this out of jealousy so anyway i wrote this experience though three years prior and i'm sitting up in bed realizing i just witnessed something that i wrote about (laughs) and nobody knows and you feel like you're living in your novel (laughs) right and i'm like am i crazy what is happening Mm -hmm. So, King, you know, I'm thinking, and I'm sitting, I'm like just sitting up, and I'm looking around, you know, I'm a medium, so I'm feeling the room. And I do have a portal situation on the left, and usually that's where my grandmother will come, Ashley, other little visitors, but I know them, though. Like, their relatives, their family, friends, that kind of thing. I have woken up to a few strangers now and then, but I usually find a connection, except for one time, ever. But... This was odd. And I'm like, okay, I just experienced this thing that I wrote about three years ago. How is this happening? And I thought of Harry's dream. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I go, oh, I feel on the left where I usually feel them kind of come, people come and go, I feel a male. And as soon as I went, oh, it knew that I knew Mm -hmm. that it was there. And then I saw a streak of Even in the dark, I still have these big night lights and stuff, of course, because I'm a medium and I get these visitors at night, so I want to see when I wake (laughs) up, you know, and open my eyes. (laughs) Makes sense to me. (laughs) So I have a big, yeah, right? I have this oil diffuser that has a light in it that's really bright, so I saw it. It was a black shadow that, all I can describe it really is a black shadow kind of cloud that turned into a ball and then, like, turned into a streak as it went the right like towards the right of my room and then out the door like wow. through the crack of the door and was gone it was crazy that is crazy it was so nuts so things get crazier believe it or not i call um lori my friend lori from the ghost guild and i tell her about what harry had said all these days ago and she was like i think this is a real person trying to get you to tell their story and they're coming to you because that's why people come to you they're trying to really relay messages and i'm like no 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 this is just something strange i don't know what this is but there's no way this story is real and i didn't want the story to be real because this guy is terrible this character (laughs) is dark and bad and i'm like no this can't be real i don't want this guy in my house was just what I'm trying to say to her. She's not getting it. <laughs> she's so excited about it. Yeah. Like, this is so cool. Just like the other person came to you and I'm like, no, no, hold the fort. The other person was nice. This like, is this not is cool. Bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you write you the get? story. <laughs> don't worry to yeah. write the story. <laughs> I'm like, you don't understand. So then I call Harry like the next day because she's like you gotta call Harry and you gotta tell Harry what you saw so I call Harry and he's like I, I tried to warn you I was telling you and I'm like alright Harry I don't want to hear the dad stuff okay of like you know I was right and I'm like you don't understand this thing is not good and what do I do about it there would so, be my question yeah what the hell do I do so then I call Paul because Paul was supposed to be on my podcast anyway and I'm like so on a side note on a personal note I need help And he's like, what happened? So I tell him everything. He goes, what road is it? I said, okay, it's Leeway Road. And and it's Leeway as in one word and then road separate. And he goes, okay. So he looks up Leeway Road. There's only three in the country, not in Troy, Ohio, where the book is said, which is my hometown. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought I made this up. However, the guy who dies is, he dies in a gold Ford Taurus. And I've always struggled with the name what to name his character. I mean, I can't tell how many times people have asked me, what's the main character's name of this dark guy? 
And I have told them, I don't feel that there's a name yet. So I have not named him. It's been a big struggle when you're writing who has no name. No, yeah. right? Yes, I do. Uh huh. That's a difficult thing. And I'm like, okay, so I bounce back between Michael or Brandon Lawson. Now, Brandon Lawson, do I know a Brandon Lawson? Absolutely not. But I thought, it's just a really typical good name. Mm-hmm. So I thought this was not real. Paul Googles this and he finds this leeway road. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to look, look around or whatever and start to do some research because Harry and Lori just kept bugging me about it. Now Paul was adamant about it. So I'm like, okay, fine. But the problem is I didn't want to know. I look it up and I said, man dies, leeway road, gold Ford tours. That's what I typed in. Now this story pops up. One, only story that ever is a male who dies on Leeway Road in a gold Ford Taurus. It's insane. It's actually in Kentucky, and it is 4.2 miles away. From you? No, actually oh. from, in Kentucky, from Leeway Road. This male dies in a Ford Taurus named Russell. The other man who killed him, who they still don't know why, mur- went over the median line and killed himself, his fiance, and two babies. Wow. in a Corolla, but he killed the man and his wife, actually, it, he, they were in the Gold Ford Taurus. His, he was taking his wife home from the hospital. It was her last day of cancer treatment. She had lung cancer and she just got told she would live. Oh my. It was just terrible. Mm-hmm. So no one knows still to this day, drifted over and he killed them. But, Brent, but the man named Russell was fighting for his life for a long time until he died. Now, I have never heard that he actually really did die, but I feel like he, he really must have because on the news they were saying he basically, there's no way he would make it. There was also on YouTube, the news put a reporter on telling the story, showing the pictures. The reporter's name was my name. Really? Yes. Wow. How odd is all of this? Plus, I was telling my hairdresser. And she goes, you know what Leeway Road is? And, oh, actually, it wasn't my hairdresser. I'm sorry. I was telling my hairdresser, and then I also told my friend, Heather, the same day. And Heather goes, you know what Leeway Road means? Because we use it in everyday language and for my work. This is a Leeway Inn. This is our Leeway. And I was like, well, of course, I've heard of that before, but I just thought I was making this road up. And she was like, no, 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 no. And she looked up what Leeway means. It's basically a chance for a new beginning, a new way of life, rebirth, Mm -hmm. all this stuff. And I'm like, what the? I had never thought of any of this. So things were just extremely adding up. I mean, the guy's name who is Brandon Lawson and then, you know, accidentally kills his whole family, right? So his life is taken suddenly, which is my character. The other guy's in a gold Ford Taurus. He dies suddenly, and his wife is told that she's going to live, and then she dies with him in the car, you know. All this stuff is really crazy. It's just insane. Mm-hmm. On top of that, again, it gets worse. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> yeah. The next week, I'm lying in bed, and this is this is last weekend. I'm lying in bed, trying to take a nap. My husband took the kids out of the house, like which never happens, and I knew he'd be gone for like six hours. So I'm lying here trying to sleep and stuff because I just started really heavily exercising outside and I'm just, and I was kaput. And I'm like, I need to, I need to rest when they're finally out of the house. And all of a sudden, this has never happened before. Now I have visitors at night and only at night sometimes, and they're usually relatives unless it's something that is going on or a connection to somebody or something trying to give me a message, which has only happened probably twice. I have never had any kind of noise or physical activity besides turning on a light happen, and it's always been at like 2 in the morning or something. And here it's in the middle of the day, and it's probably 1 o'clock or something, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm lying here in bed on just a normal Saturday, only one in the house, and I hear creak. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is that, right? You're in a I'm horror like, movie. <laughs> yeah. My eye opens and I'm like, huh? And I notice that it's coming from in front of my bed, right where I saw that, like, bolt of lightning, spirit, whatever you want to call it, because I still don't know. And then I look and I hear it again. And it's just another, it's like footsteps. And it seemed to just find the creakiest, the only creaky point 
there is literally in this room. And I'm like, what in the world? I like sit up and I say, hello, is anybody there? Hello? And then nothing answers, you know, I don't hear anything. And I lie down, I'm like, all right, so I've, I've experienced a lot of weird stuff. I still don't know what to make of all this. So I think it's just my imagination. I'm a writer, right? It's just my imagination. <laughs> I'm going crazy. So what I do is I lie back down and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to go to sleep again. And I hear it again. Now this time it made four footsteps. And I sat up and I was like, okay, enough. I don't know who you are, but stop. I'm trying to get some sleep. Please go. Please go. And so 15, 20 minutes go by, same thing happens. So finally I, I give up. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go take a bath because the whole point is I was trying to relax, right? Right. And I'm like, I'll do some like meditation or something. Relax. I'm about to get in the bathtub and I never do this, but my door was like open to my bathroom, to my, into my bedroom. It's our, our master. And I did that so I could hear if the kids would come home because they'll always shout out for me like, mommy, where are you? And it kind of like the trick is to like find where mommy is in the house. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to scare them by not answering, you know, if I was in there and couldn't hardly hear them. So I left the door open and I thought twice about it. Like I shouldn't be doing this, but I can't live with the fact of disappointing the kids or scaring the kids of we're not being able to find me. And I had my phone all the way across the, the bathroom. So I couldn't really get to it. It was really far away from the bathtub. And I was like, shoot, I was getting in. I'm like, I shouldn't have probably, you know, left it over there. So I have one foot in the bathtub, literally, when I hear, hello, coming from downstairs in a little <laughs> child's voice. And it sounds like, you know, a little girl who's talking to like a pet, like a little like charming, like, oh, your baby boo, you know, like kind of like... <laughs> They're talking to a baby or a little pet, you know, and I'm like, oh, she must be talking to her dog. So I'm like, Emma, I'm up here. I'm talking like, Emma, that's my daughter's name. And I'm screaming for her and, and I'm screaming for my son and telling my husband that I'm up here. I'm here. I wait. 10 minutes goes by. Nothing. I don't hear anything now. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get the phone because my garage door is hooked to my like notification to my phone because of, of wireless stuff my husband these techie things he mm -hmm. hooked it to my phone so if it goes up or down it'll notify me i look at my phone and i literally picked up my phone and i see there's no notification that the garage went up so i know now that i'm alone in this house okay all of a sudden i realize it it's crazy my phone rings and then it's my husband. And I was like, well, where are you guys? Because I keep hearing you calling for me. Our daughter's calling, you know, and I'm answering her and they're not coming up here. And he goes, well, I'm at Walmart. Do you want milk? And I'm like, no, 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 you don't seem to understand. <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 I'm at Walmart. Do you need milk? I need to know now because the kids are really making me upset and I have to go back and I have to get it. And I'm really frustrated. And I'm like, okay, I'll go get the milk. And he's gone. And then I realized, oh my God. There's no one in the house, and I clearly heard it. And I heard it three times. Hello? <laughs> this sweet little girl. And I'm, I'm telling like, you, this is sounding more and more like a horror movie. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. And, it, yeah, it's crazy. I get back in the bathtub trying to brush it off, and I'm like, I'm just crazy. I'm just nuts. Whatever. Like, right? I'm a writer, so I'm just imagining this. It's not really <laughs> happening to me. Footsteps didn't happen. This isn't happening. My house is not haunted. Like, what is happening? So I get in the bathtub. Ten minutes go by, nothing. And then all of a sudden I hear again, Hello! <laughs> Three times again in a row. Mary, you're reading my book probably, the 2095, because I sent it to you or have. But yes, I have it. What? Yes, I do have, it. have it. Yes, so yes. In my book, there's mimicking of my mother putting keys down on the table and then the ghost copying the mimic like mimicking the sound of the keys when my mom comes home and drops them on the table to get us out of our rooms and like you know be with this ghost because they're lonely well i was like thinking of that great i'm stuck again in the past of this already happening to me 30 years ago this is happening to me again this mimicking or something because i can hear hello after all this, I mean, you know, Tim, my husband comes home and I tell him, you know what happened? And he's like, of course, this could only happen to you. <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand. Like the phone rang and then immediately when I go up to check the phone or whatever, the garage door, you, you know, you call me. How weird is that? So then that very night I'm going to sleep again. I had turned on a bunch of TV, watched a bunch of reality shows to not think of this and stuff. I go to bed. All of a sudden I hear the footsteps creak creek creek in the same place so i sit up and i'm like look now i'm mad 
and I'm like, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you want, but you're not going to get it from me tonight. You need to go. And then all of a sudden I hear the footsteps walk further to across the room now from the right because it probably was walking like literally probably like a two feet space like three foot space not very big with these footsteps it would kind of be like walk walk turn around walk walk and it was quite odd because they wouldn't really leave that vicinity but now I heard it plain as day walk all the way across the room and I had this hanger on another door on the on the left side of my room actually kind of where this portal is and it was like a cheap Walmart hanger. I had it hung it up there days ago and forgotten about it. And with the force of hell, I swear, this thing just like took it. It was like it took its hand and it just went boom on the one side of the mm-hmm. hanger. Mm-hmm. And the hanger started flipping around the doorknob. Oh, wow. With tons of force. It went around at least five times. Oh, my. And I jumped out of bed, turned on the light. Because I could see it still in the dark because of my amazing night glow light here. I got up and I was really mad now. <laughs> I was like, dang it, 20, 2095 is happening to me again. Because I jumped out of bed and I'm like, hey, I've already gone through this and I'm not doing it again. Get the hell out of my house. <laughs> I, I was just yelling and I'm like, really, really it's me off. <laughs> like, then I did my whole thing in Jesus Christ's name. I banish you, and then yes. I feel it go. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, and I have not felt it since. But I guarantee, because I'm telling you this now, something's going to happen tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> you can't think that way. <laughs> you have not seen it since you banished it in the name of Jesus, correct? Yes, not. I have not seen it. I okay. think it will be back soon. <laughs> So stay tuned. Right. That's what I was thinking, because we're going to be doing this again. I have no doubt, because this has gone on. Well, that's a long story that you've had already, and you haven't even gotten over the not, a denial of it's not fiction. Yeah, <laughs> you, right. you're still in denial about it. <laughs> so I figure things are I'm still, change. like, hardcore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately. And I think it came because it was mad because I was not, you know, I wasn't writing it at the time and it wants, and it's the character that wants what it wants and will do anything to get what it wants. Well, obviously. So, yes, right. I that know. Would make that's me what mad. Stay yeah. tuned because it's, it's going to get worse. <laughs> well, I'm praying in Jesus' name that you're protected, period. End of conversation. <laughs> thank you. We'll need it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to say thank you so much for this one. And, There will be a part two to discuss the farmhouse experience. Thank you so much for this, Rosella. It is a great story. I know people are going to really be interested. Thank you. And if you want any kind of continuation, please go to my A Haunted, yeah, A Haunting Good Time podcast. I'm going to be continuing whatever happens there too. Great. So they'll, they'll get it in both places. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast, I encourage you to share it with others you think would also be interested. If you'd like to know more about me, go to M-A-R-Y-A-N-N-P-O-L-L dot com and or authormasterminds dot com forward slash M-A-R-Y dash A-N-N dash P-O-L-L. Until next time, may the wind always be at your back, the sun on your face, and the good Lord walk beside you.